Imagine the unimaginable. The world's largest superpower, the United States, comes under a nuclear threat as missiles rain down from the sky. ICBMs, or Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, hurtle toward American soil, launched from distant lands like Russia or North Korea. It's a nightmare scenario, one that seems too terrifying to entertain. But the reality is, nuclear ICBMs could hit U.S. soil within 30 minutes after launch. The question is, can the U.S. defend itself against this kind of attack? Before we explore the United States defense systems, it's essential to understand the missile threats it's up against. These are no ordinary missiles. They are weapons capable of annihilating cities and altering the course of history. Let's look at the Russian and North Korean ICBMs that could potentially strike the U.S. One of the most fearsome weapons in Russia's arsenal is the RS-28 Sarmat, dubbed the Satan II. This nuclear missile is designed to defeat the best missile defense systems in the world. It's built to carry up to 15 nuclear warheads, each capable of decimating large metropolitan areas. With a range of up to 18,000 kilometers, it can hit any target in the U.S. from Russian soil. What makes Satan II so dangerous is its advanced countermeasures. It's equipped with sophisticated decoys and penetration aids that confuse missile defense systems. Additionally, Satan II has the capability to maneuver during its descent, making it even harder to track and intercept. The missile's MIRVs, or multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, ensure that even if some warheads are destroyed, others can still hit their intended targets, overwhelming missile defenses. Beyond its ability to deploy multiple warheads, Satan II can also carry hypersonic glide vehicles, or HGVs, which travel at speeds greater than Mach 5 and can change direction mid-flight. This makes them extremely difficult for traditional missile defense systems to intercept. Russia's missile development continues to push the boundaries of defense technology, ensuring that even the best systems might struggle to defend against this threat. On the other side of the globe, North Korea's missile development continues to pose a serious threat. The Wasong-17, North Korea's most advanced ICBM, has a range of around 15,000 kilometers, meaning it could strike any location in the United States. Although North Korea's missile technology is less advanced than Russia's, it's improving at a frightening pace. The Wasong-17 is believed to be equipped with multiple warheads and designed to overcome missile defense systems through maneuverability and penetration aids. North Korea's missiles, much like Russia's, can deploy decoys to confuse the tracking systems of missile interceptors, making them harder to intercept. Despite North Korea's smaller arsenal, these missiles represent a real and growing danger. What makes North Korea particularly challenging is its mobile launch platforms. These launchers can be moved at a moment's notice, making it difficult for the U.S. to detect and track missile launches until it's too late. It's a game of high-stakes hide-and-seek, where the enemy can launch from almost anywhere in the country. With these advanced missiles capable of decimating the U.S. in a matter of minutes, the question becomes, can the United States stop them? Fortunately, the U.S. has invested billions into missile defense systems. But the question remains, will these systems be enough? The first line of defense against an incoming ICBM is the Ground-Based Mid-Course Defense System, or GMD. GMD is designed to intercept nuclear warheads during their mid-course phase, which is the time when they are traveling through space, just before re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. During this phase, missile defense systems can target warheads as they are in a predictable trajectory. The ground-based interceptors, or GBI, are launched from silos in places like Alaska and California to intercept and destroy ICBMs in space. These interceptors travel at high speeds, relying on kinetic energy to destroy the incoming missile. GMD uses a combination of radar systems, such as the sea-based X-band radar, and satellite tracking to pinpoint the exact location of the missile in space. However, GMD has limitations. Its success rate is somewhat contested. The system is designed to intercept missiles during a time when they are still on a predictable flight path, 
but advanced countermeasures like decoys, MIRVs, and decoy warheads can overwhelm the system. The U.S. has only 44 GBIs currently in operation, which limits the number of missiles that can be intercepted at once. While GMD handles missile defense in space, Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense, or BMD, operates in the terminal phase of a missile's flight, when it's re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Aegis uses Standard Missile 3, or SM-3, interceptors launched from Navy destroyers and cruisers. These interceptors are designed to intercept missiles up to 100 kilometers in altitude, well above commercial airliners, but lower than ICBM re-entry speeds. The Aegis system excels at handling short to medium-range ballistic missiles, but can also play a role in intercepting ICBMs. While Aegis isn't the primary line of defense for ICBM strikes, it adds an extra layer of protection, especially for regional missile threats. As the missile gets closer to its target, the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, or THAAD, system comes into play. THAAD is designed to intercept missiles in the terminal phase, just before they strike their target. The system uses hit-to-kill technology, meaning it destroys the incoming missiles by physically colliding with it at speeds greater than Mach 8. In other words, the intercepting missile hits the target with such force that it effectively destroys the warhead. THAAD is deployed in many places around the world and has a range of up to 200 kilometers. This gives it the capability to protect against regional missile threats, including North Korean ICBMs. However, against a full-scale Russian nuclear attack, THAAD may only be able to intercept a limited number of missiles. In the event of a missile strike on the U.S., it's important to consider what the enemy targets. The goal of a nuclear ICBM strike isn't just destruction. It's to cripple the U.S. and severely limit its ability to retaliate. The first targets of a nuclear strike would undoubtedly be the most populated cities, New York, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Chicago, and other strategic locations. Destroying these urban centers would have a devastating psychological impact, while also crippling the economic and political heart of the nation. Widespread civilian casualties and chaos would ensure a swift collapse of national morale. Adversaries would also target military bases, particularly those housing nuclear weapons, ICBM silos, and missile defense systems. Crippling U.S. military capabilities would make it impossible for the U.S. to retaliate or defend itself. Key bases such as Mino Air Force Base, North Dakota, and Vandenberg Air Force Base, California, would be the top of the target list. Finally, the enemy would strike at critical infrastructure, energy grids, transportation networks, and communication hubs. The goal here would be to paralyze the country, making it harder for the U.S. to organize a defense or recovery. In the event of a nuclear attack, the U.S. would retaliate with devastating force through the Doctrine of Mutually Assured Destruction, or MAD. This means that even if a portion of the U.S. is destroyed, the enemy would face total annihilation in return. The U.S. arsenal of ICBMs, submarine-launched ballistic missiles, or SLBMs, and nuclear-capable bombers would ensure that no adversary could survive an all-out nuclear war. Missile defense systems can intercept some missiles, but they can never guarantee 100% protection. The real deterrence lies in the U.S. retaliatory capability, which is designed to deliver devastating punishment to any nation that dares to launch a nuclear strike. As technology evolves, the cat-and-mouse game of missile defense and attack will continue. The U.S. must remain vigilant and invest in next-generation systems that can counter advanced threats like Russia's Satan-2 and North Korea's Wasong-17. While defense systems can certainly intercept many missiles, the only surefire way to guarantee national survival is through a credible deterrent strategy, ensuring that any nation thinking of launching a nuclear attack on the U.S. will face an inevitable and catastrophic retaliation.